Hi, this is Kerry with Filmmaker Central, and today we're going to talk about speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve. That's slowing things down, speeding things up, all the different controls that we have for that. Let's dive right in. Okay, I've got two clips here we're going to work with. One is, um, let's switch over here. There we go. Make that fit. There we go. So we're going to go through the water puddle here. We're going to slow this one down. And over here, we're going to speed this guy way up. This is a pretty long shot. So we're going to make this uh, just zoom right along. Yeah, stretch this guy. I'll show you just how long this clip is. And yeah. There we go. All right. From the top to the bottom, we'll speed that guy up. Let's start here. I'm going to close my media pool so we can see as much of this as we can. And we have, let's see, 17. So we have a, yeah, a pretty long clip here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's almost a, like a two minute long clip. It's going to be way too long to, for anyone to sit there and watch. So a couple different options here. We can right click on it and go to change clip speed and we can just adjust this up and down. If we go into the negatives, you see it turns on reverse speed. So play it backwards, right? If we go forward, we can go as, pretty much as fast as we want. Now, if we have other things on the timeline and we want everything to shrink, you know, to adapt to it, we can turn on ripple timeline and do that. If we want to just freeze frame on one frame on here, we can choose freeze frame. So we can maintain our timing with the keyframe or stretch to fit. I'm not going to worry about those, but let's change this to uh, 500%. Change, boom, we got a nice, very easy way. The problem with this is you really don't know what you're doing, right? You don't visually see how this is changing. You don't see how it's working on the timeline until you've already done it. So let's undo that and let's look at another way. So I'm going to hit command R or I believe it's uh, alt R on a windows machine. I'm on a Mac. Sorry. <laughs> I know the Mac commands. It's command R to go into change speed. Now with this, I can just grab a handle up here and we can visually see how things are changing. And normally it doesn't blank the screen when you do that. So that's kind of strange. I am using 18.5 beta two. Uh, doesn't matter. This will work in pretty much all the previous versions of DaVinci Resolve, free or studio, doesn't matter. The speed controls I'm going to show you are available in the free version as well. So we've got this bumped up to uh, around a thousand percent and it just whips through here. Now, when you're making something faster, there isn't much else you have to do, right? Because all you're doing is you're playing it back faster. You're not having to, when you, well, when you slow things down, now there's gaps that exist because there's missing frames. When you speed something up, the frames are all there. You're just displaying them back faster. If we go and look at our change clip speed, we can see we're playing it at 299 frames per second. So we're playing all the frames. We're just playing them faster. So there's really nothing else to do when we speed something up. So that's pretty handy. Now I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And uh, let's see, command R, we're at 110%. If I want to reset this, I can click on it, say reset to 100%, boom, done. Or I can use some defaults here, change speed 10, 25, all the way up to 800%, and it just does it pretty easy. So that's speeding things up. Slowing things down is a little different. Now, also, we're going to get into some advanced stuff in a little bit with retime curves to smooth out transitions where we want something to start 
at normal speed, change the speed, and then go back to regular speed. We'll play around with that over here. So with this clip, we have the Jeep. I'll just play it back in regular speed. We hit the water, we drive out. Pretty simple. But let's make that water more dramatic. When we slow it down, we'll see a lot more of the movement of the water, the, the splashing. So we want to make that a lot more dramatic. Well, we can exactly do the same thing we did before, and we can stretch this out. Now notice I'm going to start overwriting the other file here. If I go up to my trim control, trim edit mode, or hit T, now when I do this, it's going to be like a magnetic timeline and it's going to push everything or pull it back. So let's say we want to go uh, around 25%, right? Uh, 26%. When we play it back, I'm going to go full screen. There's some jerkiness to the footage. Well, I also don't want to start there. I want to have it go more normal speed until we get to the water, then slow it down. But you'll see the jumpiness from frame to frame because it's just missing data. It doesn't know how to fill in the gaps when we slow things down. So first, let's get into how, let's, let's make this a little more dynamic. We'll go normal speed, slow it down, go back to normal speed, right? So I'm going to go ahead and reset this back to 100%. I'm going to get rid of these other markers here so they don't confuse me. And right there is where we hit the water and we come out of the water. Let's do it right there. Okay. That's going to give us something good to work with here. So we're already in our speed change mode, right? Command R. And I'm going to go to the first spot. Go to this little menu here, say add a speed point. I'll go to the next one, do it again, say add a speed point. Great. So now we have three sections of this clip. And then I can just slow down the middle section. So let's slow down the middle section. Okay. We approach the water. It slows down. We get that jumpy look. We'll fix that in a little bit. And then it jumps right to full speed. That's going to be a little jarring uh, for whoever's watching. It's just going to jump to full speed, right? Boom. We need to smooth that out. We need to kind of fade, if you will, from normal speed to our slower speed. So we're going to come back to our clip here. We're going to right click. Go to retime curve. Now we can see the changes basically on a graph and we can change them. We can pull them in, move them out. We can do all kinds of different manipulation with this. If I want to make it faster, I can just pull up on it. I can slow it down by pulling down. I can move the points in and out. So I can decide exactly when I want those things to hit, but to make this look smoother, we need to curve these transition points. You can see here, they're just, boom, it just drops. So I'm going to select that point. It's going to click on it until it turns red. And I'm going to come to this section here and go to this icon on the left. You can see it smoothed it out nicely and it gives me these handles so I can determine how fast do I want that transition to happen. I'll come over here, do the same thing. And again, I can control that. Now let's take a look at it. Go full screen. So we have a slower transition going into the water. And we should have a nice transition coming out of the water. picks up the speed, 
and goes right in. Now, again, let's, we can smooth these out even more. Okay, now let's take a look at this first one here. Okay, much smoother transition into the, into the slow-mo, and then we'll transition out really nicely. Okay, looking good so far, but we still have the issue of these jumpy frames. Now let's make this even more dramatic. Let's take this down to like 10%. Now when we play it back, we should see some really jumpiness to it. Again, I'll go full screen and you just see jump, 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 jump. This obviously is not gonna work for you if you're you know, trying to make a, a professional looking video. So let's fix that. With the clip selected, we're gonna go over to our inspector, make sure our inspector is turned on. We're gonna go to our retime process and we can try a number of different options here. We can try nearest. Let's see how that works. Nope, still jumpy. We can try frame blending. Okay. It's smoother, but we're, we're seeing some nasty ghosting in there. So again, not gonna work for us. Let's go to optical flow. And if we start with our base settings here. Well, already that looks way, way, way better. There's a little bit of extra ghosting there, barely noticeable. This could be totally usable at this point. If we want kind of the ultimate, we, there's still more settings to go. But let's, uh, let's make sure everything is working good here. Ah, look at that. So this is one of the problems that happens when we're slowing things down. Because it's having to make up data between frames, sometimes we get this weird ghosting effect on some things. Now I have tried to fix this with every setting in the book and I just couldn't get around it. The only option was to literally move the speed point to where I, it, was, it just happened before that issue. So you really gotta pay attention to it to see if it's gonna do what you wanna do. Okay, let's go to our motion estimation and we'll go to speed warp. This should give us the best looking option here. Now problem, <laughs> it's gonna run really, really slow. Now this is a MacBook Pro M1 Max with 64 gigs of RAM and you can see it is choking on this footage. So we wanna be able to watch it. We wanna make sure it's okay. I've got the clip selected. I'm gonna go up to clip and say render cache color output. Now we'll see the red line go on there telling me how much of it has been pre-rendered and then we'll be able to play it back in real time. So this is just kind of a little shortcut to make sure to, to get what it's gonna look like, right? We're actually rendering the footage. Now, depending on your machine, depending on how slow you went, I went slow, we're going 14%. It's probably gonna take a while. <laughs> it's, unfortunately, it's just not a fast process, you know? And I, I do believe the speed warp, that is only going to be in the studio version. So the rest of the settings are gonna be in the free version. The speed warp only gonna be in the studio version. So let's give this some time to do its thing. Okay, well, it's finishing things up here. Just has a little hair left to go. And then we'll go ahead and give it a watch. And looks like it's done. So we'll go to the beginning. Let's go full screen here. Super nice, smooth transition into the slow-mo, and that slow-mo looks great. It looks like it was filmed at 240 frames per second. Really, really cool.
That looks great. Look at that water. And it should transition out of this very nicely. Now you see some weird warping on the front tire there. All right, that looked great. So there you have speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve. Again, this has been the same for several versions now. So if you're still on 16, 17, or 18, it's, it's gonna work the same. Uh, it does work a lot faster on Apple silicone than it does on an Intel machine. But if you have uh, like a PC with a really good graphics card, it'll go nice and smooth. So it's really uh, GPU intensive. Now, Mac silicone works really well, but when you're reducing it down to 14%, that took a few minutes for sure. So thanks for watching everybody. This has been Kerry with Filmmaker Central. Hope this helped you with your speed ramps. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.